Question seven then is um, looking at a sample of 40 customers. So we've got our 40 customers here and they are chain, uh, uh, buying some euros and transferring into pounds. So the amount paid in pounds is written in the in this table here. And what we're then told, we're given some summary data. So we're told that the standard deviation, sorry, the standard deviation S is 146.3. So it's a really spread out sample with a mean of 317.5. Now, the reason why we've been given that data is just so that we don't have to input all of this information into our calculator because we'd be there a long time. We're told that the sample is random and we're asked to construct a 99% confidence interval on the mean. Now, what we need to be aware here is at no point has normal distribution been, um, been spoken about. So this is actually a situation where the central limit theorem will apply. The number in the sample is greater than 30. So when we are using our standard deviation, we are going to be using the standard error sigma over root n if we need to. OK, now in this question, I'm first of all just going to show you how we do this using our calculator. So very, very simply, it's interval, it's a Z interval when we have got one sample. OK, so the confidence level we're looking for is 0 0.99. Our sigma is 146.3. Our X bar is the mean, so 317.5 and the number in our sample is 40. Now what some students get confused about here is putting sigma in there. Now they want to write that as sigma over root m, but when we're using the, the interval function on the calculator, this does that for us, okay? So in doing that, that gives us our confidence interval. So our confidence interval is equal to 257.92 377.08 or 0 0.1. Um, sorry, giving our limits to two decimal places, so make sure that you do read the question properly because otherwise you will not get all the marks. So 92 there and 2377.08. So there I've done it's two decimal places, and that's worth four marks. I just want to take a little bit more time around this question just to think about what you would do if you didn't have your calculator or if you were wanting to check it through. So if we weren't using a calculator, we would be looking for a confidence interval, a 99% confidence interval. So 99% between these two values here. So we know that the mean is 317.5. And what we're looking for is what are those two numbers either side of our mean. So we would be using our standardizing formula, z is x minus mu over sigma. Now it's in this situation where we would be doing sigma over root n. If we were to do this from first principles from this formula here, then we would be inputting sigma over root n into our calculator potentially. Okay, so to find out this plus or minus z value, we would use our calculator or we could use the second uh, table in our formula book. So we're looking for a distribution, it's normal, inverse normal, and we want the center to be 0 0.99. Sigma, this time we're using sigma over root n. So it is the sigma that we've been given, but it's been divided by the square root of 40, okay? And our mean is 317.5. And we can see that we get the same numbers, okay? So they would be that would be another way of doing it. We'd be putting, inputting it into our calculator, finding those numbers there. If you wanted to use the formulas, then you'd be looking for your two Z values, and then you would just put that into the um, this, this but with zero, uh, with our mean being zero, and our standard deviation being one. And then you get your two Z values, and you can then plug everything into this formula, which I'm not going to do. But we've seen the two ways of doing it. So it's either using the inverse normal function and calculating it that way, in which case we have to change our standard deviation, or just using the interval function. For part B then, um, we're asked to comment on with justification whether the mean number of euros um, is 400. Now, 
I, I think a lot of students made mistakes on this one because they didn't realise that we actually had to use the confidence interval. So we're told we're after the mean being 400. Now our confidence interval here is in pounds. Okay, so if we convert our 400 euro mean into pounds, so doing that we're dividing by 1.2. Okay, so if we do 400 divided by our 1.2, we get 3, 3, 30, 333, sorry, 0.3 recurring. Okay, so that's now in pounds. Now, what we're asked to sort of think about is, is this in the confidence interval? Yes, it is. So we're going to say that the claim is true. So the claim is likely to be true since the 400 euros lies in the confidence interval. So it's lying within that confidence interval, so it's most likely that the claim is can be accepted and is true because the 400, which is 333 pounds, does lie within our confidence interval. Now part two, this was done rather better. However, um, some students did make a mistake reading the question. Use the data in the table to comment on the claim that at most 25% of customers. Now what a lot of students did was commented on the claim that 25% of the customers um, you bought fewer than 200 euros. So if we just look at what 200 euros is, let's firstly convert that into pounds. So divide that by 1.2 to find out what it is in pounds, because then we're just gonna do a direct look in our table. So dividing that by 1.2, gives us the value 166.67 pounds. So what we're being asked to look at, look at the table, how many values in the table are at most 25%, so are at most 66.67, okay? So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven values are at most 25%. It's not including 25%, so I wouldn't count the 66.6, .6, the one, this one here, I wouldn't count that. If you do, you don't actually lose marks um, in the, the mark scheme. So what we're gonna be saying is that seven values out of 40 are less than 25%. Um, sorry, twenty. Sorry, that's not true at all. Um, are are less than two hundred dollars, and said the wrong thing again. Two hundred euros. So four out of um, sorry, seven out of forty is seventeen point five percent are less than two hundred euros. So a lot of students got that, and then told me that the claim was false. But reading it through, comment on the claim that at most 25%. So, and so since this is less than, so 17.5% is less than 25%, the claim is true. And that was not required for our two marks. So if you didn't get those second two marks, just check, was it because you misread that question and looked for exactly 25%.